letters to the neighbors. That's exactly. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the new one. You must have been in the context. Did he talk about it? The bridge deck. said the section, but he didn't say what it was. McMullen Ave. It's got to be the deck. It's the surface, the road surface up above, not the structure. So, yeah, they'll have to close down the highway and resurface the whole damn thing. And I don't know how far, but whatever they do. It'll only take five years. Yeah. Close it down and burn everything. Call the Tuesday, August 16th, 2022 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Uh, Joe, could you please call the roll? Sure. Rich Roberts. Here. Ryan Allard. Joe Hammer here. Jim Hughes. Yes. George Oichel. Here. Tom Dean. Here. Tony Homicki. Here. Dave Edwards. Here. Michael Vieira. David Drake. Here. Peter Lombruni. Here. Paul Thompson. Here. All right, so we have, what's that? Seven regular members and three alternates. So um, when we get down to seating people to vote, I'll kind of alternate among the alternates. Uh, we have one public hearing item tonight. The way it's gonna work is um, call the applicant to come up and make the presentation, identify themselves by name and address for the record, talk about what it is they'd like to do uh, the commission will have some back and forth with them. Uh, once that's done, we'll open it up to members of the public who may wish to comment on the application. Um, following hearing from the members of the public, we'll have the applicant come back up and respond to any public comments as well as any new or additional questions that the commission may have. Um, if at that point we believe we have enough information to make a decision on the application, we'll close the hearing, go into deliberations, and vote on it. If for some reason there are, um, you know, open questions or additional information that, you know, that's necessary to, to uh, you know, reach a fair conclusion on the application, we'll continue it to the next meeting. But, uh, you know, either way, everybody will know what's happening while we're doing it. Um, there are a couple of things that were published in the paper that aren't going forward tonight. There was one for uh, 164, 166 Main Street that was on the agenda that was uh, posted last week that is not going forward tonight. That'll be heard on September 7th. So the one public hearing item we do have is application 2116-22Z. Uh, Chris and Daniel Thompson seeking a special permit in accordance with section 36C, um, accessory buildings and structures of the Weathersfield zoning regulation for uh, a shed at 84 Whipperwill Way. So if somebody is here on behalf of the applicant, they can uh, come on up. Just please give us your name and address and tell us what you want to do. Can I just talk to you guys? Sure. That's fine. Chris Thompson. Oh, okay. Well, don't talk bad about him. I won't. <laughs> Good evening. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Can you so, pull down the mic and talk into it so that <clears throat> the thousands of viewers at home can... I wasn't <laughs> gifted in the height department. I apologize. <laughs> so, yeah, we are seeking a special permit for um, a pre-built shed that's 12 by 18 to be installed in our backyard. Um, if you... I, I believe you have the drawing in front of you. It's a 12 by 18 centered on their pool. Yeah. It's roughly 11 to 14 feet from the back line and probably around 20 to it's, 21 it's feet. It's 21 from the, feet from, from, the the right the, from the the edge of the pool. 
Okay. Set back. Could you just please give us your name and address? Oh, I'm Tom Perone, 922 Cloverdale Circle. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we received um, copies of, you know, pictures of the shed and the site plan showing where it um, is intended to go. And just for context, the only reason it's here is because it's slightly larger than the 200 feet that you right. would be able to put in as of right. Um, did you have any comments for from staff? Um, so typically, if it was under 200 square feet, they would be allowed to um, just go to full building permit. The shed that they're proposing is 216 right. square feet, um, so they're looking for relief from 16 square feet, um, and they do meet the five-foot minimum right. hybrid setback. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions for the applicant? <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> um, we did it's have one spooky. piece of correspondence uh, from Tricia and Robert Pesci, 94 Whooper Will Way, uh, expressing support for the permit request. Uh, they said your property is visually pleasing and well maintained. Um, is there anybody else in the public that wishes to comment on this application? Anybody else? All right. Any final comments? Comments, questions? I don't, think, I don't so. think so. All right. Someone want to make a motion to close the hearing? Make a motion to close the hearing. I'll second, second the motion. All right. Motion by George, second by Tony. Uh, all in favor? Uh, let's see. Take Paul Thompson off this one, and I'll seat Dave Drake and Peter. Uh, all in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, um, someone want to make a motion on the application? Make a motion that uh, we approve, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. All right, motion by George, second by Peter to approve. Uh, any discussion? Do we have to be specific on the square footage on this one, uh, Mr. Chairman? Um, Should we say we approve uh, 216 uh, in case there's any changes or anything like that? Well, I think we, we're approving what they applied for is this particular 12 by 18 foot shed. So if they come in with some other configuration that doesn't exceed 216, they're okay. But, right. you know, they can't get a 500 square foot shed in. Okay. George. Yeah, there uh, seem to be uh, no, no complaints, and I don't know how there could be down there. <laughs> they, there's only two houses, and both of those people Clearly, you're one support and next door. Uh, don't have a problem with you. And I don't know why you would down in there because uh, the area hasn't completely developed and uh, you know, there's houses up the street and stuff. But uh, no, I, I saw no problem when I went down there. Before. Thank you. And, uh, I just couldn't figure it out because I didn't have background material for the, some other shows. Just curious. Uh, there's no one in the paper. No, the hearing's closed. That's all I'm saying. So I, I see no problem with this at all. Thank you. After all, it's only a few feet. We would have gone with the 12 by 16, but aesthetically the 12 by 18 just fits better with the windows and the doors, the way they open, so. Well, it's adjoining the uh, pool. Yeah, the pool yeah. Else, right? correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. for sure, yeah. And you only got the one door neighbor. And he's in favor of it. Yep. So he's all set, I think. <laughs> Unless Peter up the street or somebody like that <laughs> wants to give you a hard time, but he's too far away. Anyway. I'm just uh, curious on uh, the construction of this, just out of curiosity. Does this have a foundation? No. No, no it's no. going to be it's set on crushed stone. It's crushed stone. It's, yeah, it's on crushed stone, okay. so it's pre built. Yeah. All right. All um, right. Yeah, the hearing was closed. Motion has been made to approve it. Um, any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Um, yeah, I mean, and, and congratulations. Thank you. And this and the, the items on the next agenda remind us that we've had conversations in the past about trying to shed literally some of these applications over to ZBA um, in the past and uh, 
you know, maybe we can look at that again. We have, we have two um, of these on the next agenda. Thank you. Also, um, <laughs> two on the. We don't have to invite any of us. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be shed season. Um, next item on the agenda is the 824 review referral from town council of the Board of Education uh, school bond project. We got some materials um, both in the mail uh, earlier this month and in the packet that was sent around the other day. And I would invite either the town manager or the superintendent to come up and either make say a few words or answer questions or whatever you however you'd prefer to proceed thank you good evening everyone uh, my name is Michael Emmett I am the superintendent of schools for the Weathersfield Public Schools um, before you this evening is a uh, long-range building plan that uh, seeks to address all of our elementary schools uh, in Wethersfield. Um, we are looking at a plan over the course of the next decade to build two new schools, renovate fully two schools, and then ultimately take one school offline. Um, we have done an extensive amount of due diligence. This um, project and planning for this project actually began in earnest all the way back in 2018. Um, between COVID and uh, budget constraints, um, it has been postponed. Um, this spring, we moved forward this, with this again. Um, we had a unanimous vote by the Board of Education to send this forward to Council to bring this out to, to the community for referendum in November. Um, the expectation here is in terms of doing the due diligence, um, we looked at multiple different scenarios, settling on this build two new, renovate two as new, and taking one offline. It also encompasses redistricting during the scope of this project as well. Um, and it also, um, with regard to the long range um, planning, we did an extensive um, enrollment study. Um, started that back in 2018. We actually uh, revised it um, this past year to ensure that our enrollment looks robust and stable over the course of the next 10 years. We've worked with the state of Connecticut. We have actually submitted two uh, grant applications uh, for Highcrest Elementary School for new construction, as well as Hammer Elementary School for two, uh, new construction as well. The plan for us in the future is taking the existing Highcrest once the new Highcrest building is built and using the existing structure as swing space when Emerson Williams and next when Webb go offline for renovation. This will eliminate our need to bring in portables and it keeps all students uh, at the elementary level, all 1,900 of them, out of construction during the duration of this project. So I stand ready to answer any questions you may have. George. Yeah, uh, one overall question I had was uh, the web was renovated from uh, a mid school to uh, an elementary school, what, 10 years ago? And uh, I'm wondering why it requires so much to convert it to upgrade it because I would have thought a lot was done then and that's one of the things I don't understand. Yeah, with regard to Webb, Webb was renovated back in 2005. That's one of the reasons why within the scope of this plan, it is the last one to get renovated. Um, it was built in 1962 as a junior high school and um, what we found when we did the um, review of the space, it is incredibly inefficient. Um, I will tell you also that Webb houses our preschool program as well as our programs for our students with autism. A lot of these specialized programs are very space hungry uh, and with our uh, ABA programs for students with autism, those programs encompass three classrooms as well as three classrooms for preschool. In addition to that, Webb Elementary School is our only elementary school with a true auditorium and that was space that we certainly for the community wanted to maintain. We will not have that opportunity to build auditoriums. The uh, state does not uh, look kindly upon that, will not approve that as part of building. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Dave. Well, far Dave and then near Dave. A 
quick minute. Um, what will the land for Charles Wright be used for in the future? I mean, it, it's way out there thinking, but is it just going to be an open piece of land, or is it? Yeah, that's that is really ultimately up to the town. Um, within the scope of this project, um, we are carrying demolition costs for Charles Wright, and you know, I would certainly say to the uh, panel tonight as well as to the public. We did our due diligence with regard to Charles Wright, um, and as if you've been by it, it's a landlocked um, school. It's on a very tight parcel of land. In having conversation with the state of Connecticut, um, they were really nebulous about approving any addition or renovation at Charles Wright, given its tight space. Um, you have residential housing on either side, so the ability to build out on either side is just simply not there. And I don't know if you've been over to Charles Wright at dismissal time in the afternoon or drop off in the morning. It is extraordinarily tight with traffic and um, even with a test fit, we found that we were unable to, to solve that issue. Okay, thanks. It's a nice it's a piece of land. I just don't know what the town's gonna do with it. Okay, thank you. If it, auditorium, this is just meant elementary schools, right? The yes. The state's not hot on those, just an elementary Just at the elementary, yes sir, Dave, yes, that's correct. Is it used very much in that school? I know when we re revamped it, we didn't think it was going to get used that much. It, was, you know, it, it does. It gets destroyed it, because of the you know, yes. union. Yeah, it does get used. It gets used, obviously, for um, web programs. We use it for community programs. For example, we housed a um, internet safety program. And rather than using the Weathersill High School Auditorium, which is much larger, um, the web program or the web space is actually quite nice for it. So. Are you going to touch anything with the gym? Because they actually have a real gym, too, which elementary schools typically don't have. Yeah, the gym, it would just be renovated. And I think, you know, just to go back to the point that was made earlier with the fact that um, Webb was renovated, uh, had been renovated, um, there were um, several items at Webb that were never addressed. Um, one of the things that you'll typically see on our capital improvement request is window replacement. So I believe, and this is prior to my time being in Weathersfield, but I believe that, you know, funding ran out. So. There are parts of web that did not get touched. So we have a lot of windows that date back to 1962. Um, in addition to that, we have sections of web that are air conditioned and sections that are not. So I have classroom space that is air conditioned. Um, to go into the auditorium during the summertime, it's a little bit on the toasty side. So the auditorium, the gym space, and the cafeteria um, are not air conditioned. Um, one thing I can tell you, when we did the high school renovation project, and Dave, I know you were intimately involved in that, we repurposed the split duct units from the um, coral room and moved those over to web so we could at least air condition the um, cafeteria where kids eat. So yes, sir. Will, will all of the schools be consistent once they're done with the refurbishment? All of them, all of them will be air conditioned. All will have new windows. There'll be there will be, sir. That's a great question. We'll look for consistency with regard to latest um, building standards. We'll be looking at um, enhancing HVAC systems. Obviously, as we come out of COVID, um, one of the things that we looked at was the ventilation systems in our buildings. Um, they are antiquated and old, with the exception of um, Hanmer. We did replace the boilers at Hanmer um, last, late last summer prior to the winter season, um, the boilers that we replaced were older than me. They dated back to 1966, they were original to the building. And we just had no more repairs we could do. Hartford Steam Boiler said we will no longer um, guarantee those. So we did uh, invest that money through the town to, um, to get those boilers replaced. Jim. So you're proposing just to go back, build a brand new facility at Highcrest. Yes. To create the existing one as your flex space. Correct. So no one's ever in a construction zone. Correct. So you'll be able to hopefully stay on schedule with that. Yes. Looking to stay on schedule and stay under budget. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Big challenge. That's a big plus. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Peter. Mike, this, this, yes, sir. looking at the numbers here, don't quite understand. You're taking one school out, right? and the schools that you're renovating are gonna be upgraded and that's fine. What about the numbers? <clears throat> How long does this plan uh, work projecting the numbers of students in the future? I mean, when, when do you see maybe in the future having a decrease or increase? I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what horizon you're working towards. Yeah, we're, we're looking, Peter, good question. We're looking at a 10-year horizon and we're actually looking up seven years out 
um, we contracted um, with the SLAM Collaborative um, to do this work. So they took algorithms from the state, they looked at the birth rate, they looked at historical data, um, they looked at um, how much land we had available. Um, they looked at, for example, the Borden was being built at the time, so they took into account how many potential students we had that might live at the Borden. All of our um, projects that we had here in town were taken into account. Um, as I said, when they came and did the presentation before the board, um, Pat Gallagher, um, who presented, talked about Weathersfield being among the most stable um, communities that he's seen over the course of the past 40 years. So we do expect to see a slight increase overall in the number of students. Um, we are trying to right size our buildings. That was another thing with the state of Connecticut. They're very particular about not overbuilding. So the intent here is to right size our buildings to make sure that they provide us with enough learning space um, for our students. Question yes, sir. Study. So you, you started back in 2018, I remember that. Yes. Um, when you mentioned something like the board, do you, is there a true up? Like some projections are made back in 2018, and here's what we think the board will be, the board is built, it's got hopes in it. Are there true ups that go on for each of those estimates? Yes. Yep, and that was done, that true up was done with the update that happened this past year. And for, so, out of curiosity on the board, what was the difference in the projected growth of that? It was, it was minuscule. We're talking a handful of students at best. It was not intended with that board being built as it was. The in anticipation was not one that was going to bring in a lot of families and a lot of students. because nobody ever figured the high school issue was going to come up with the rooftops and the reviewing and all the, and uh, having to project all of that and redo a lot of uh, the additional and do a lot of the additional work for that. I, I appreciate that, um, that question and that comment that. because I lived, yeah, I, I lived the high school project and a lot of what we've done with this project over the course of time is really based upon our learning experience. I mean, we saw in, you know, how many building committee meetings were we at where, you know, the demo started, we found walls within walls. We found a, an oil tank that had never been appropriately abandoned. It had and number five. Stress, what, the floors weren't a big deal in and they. Yes. Yeah, and then this time, you know, to be able to build new, what would happen, for example, with Hammer? Hammer would be built adjacent to the existing structure. When the existing structure is, when the new structure is built, we will time it calendar-wise where the move would happen during the course of the summer. And then the old Hammer would go offline, again, built in 67 with an addition in 73. Is there asbestos in that building? There most certainly is. It would go offline, it would be demoed as hazardous, with, you know, outside of anybody being in it, and then we would recreate the fields that we take up over at Stanish Park with the new building. I, I think George brings up a good point uh, on contingency. How much contingency is in this budget? Because things do come up. It, absolutely. I'd have to look at that, Peter. I haven't looked at the numbers recently, but we've carried contingency, and obviously the other piece we've had to look at um, with inflation being as it is, escalation costs. Right. So we're carrying escalation costs of a rather robust 8% for the two new builds. Um, we're cautiously optimistic that things will stabilize by the time we get to the point where we're doing um, Emerson, Williams, and Webb, and we're carrying 5% contingency for those. School do you think you're going to undertake first, or will it be a couple of them? Probably? It'll be it'll be two, um, Mr. Oyko. We're looking at um, both Hanmer and Highcrest. We'll need to do um, Hanmer. Obviously, it is in desperate need. Um, you may remember back when we did the high school. The high school was two projects. It was renovate Weathersfield High School and renovate Hanmer. And ultimately, I know there were some budget constraints back in 08. Um, it got shelved, and then when it came back, it was just let's focus on the high school. So you've got that one, and obviously Highcrest has to be a priority because in order to do the next phases, I've got to have that existing Highcrest building a swing space. Good. So all the schools we talked about, Emerson Williams is the oldest, but that seems to be 
pitch perfect though. I've been back to you because I have a new Yeah, machine. built yeah, built built in nineteen fifty two. Um, it's and it's got a nice footprint on it, so it's easy to be able to, you know, to add on to it. And you know, again, when we get into the design process, we talked about HVAC. You know, one of the other pieces we talk about that is front and center now is school safety, and to be able to design buildings. And you know, when we were at the high school, we sadly had Newtown happen. We were in the design process with the high school, and we made adjustments. That's why the library walls yes. went up instead of it's supposed to be all glass all the way around, but the walls went up high because of yep. that. Yeah, we did a lot. We did a lot with the, the way the doors were designed, you know, so you didn't have yeah, like the Get Smart TV show where they go boom, 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 so and I always complain there were too many doors. Still have too many doors. Coming in, you're like door, door, door. But yeah, the, the vestibule. Yeah, it's still there. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Tony. I'm always entertained when George asks anybody, are you going to make a promise to us? He's the town manager or the superintendent of schools. But, uh, I haven't been on this as long as you are, George, but in my 15 plus or minus a year that I've been on this, we've looked at capital items every year, and the gallons of Elmer's glue and the thousands of rolls of duct tape have, have to come to an end. I think we all agree that it's timely, it's ambitious, and uh, I've read through most of the documentation, and I think due diligence has properly been given. So thanks for all your effort, and I hope we all are on board with it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, a couple quick questions. Yes, sir. I, I actually was with Dave on the web school building committee many mm -hmm. years ago, but my understanding is if you keep, you know, sort of repairing and band-aiding these things as you go forward, and it looked like there was some significant cost estimates in the papers, that is not at all reimbursable from the state of Connecticut, correct? That That is correct. Um, if I can give you an example, we have two schools that currently have portables. Um, Highcrest and Charles Wright. Um, both of those are, are a total of four portable units. They have outlived their useful life. Um, we did check with the state to see if we could get reimbursement for replacement of the portables and we were denied. Okay. So what we ended up doing, we went out to bid twice. Um, the bids came in significantly higher than anticipated. Um, so two years ago, um, the town undertook the process of renovating the high crest portables. Um, they are in use today. Um, as I'm talking to you this evening, the Charles Wright portables are also being renovated. So they've gotten new ceilings, they're getting new siding, new windows. Um, we've pulled out carpet and uh, have put down vinyl composite tile to make them better learning spaces. Okay, thank you. And what if, if, uh, if this is approved at the referendum, what's your timing your target for starting? Yeah, we're looking at uh, approximately 18 months. So it'll be, um, you know, developing the building committee. It will be selecting an architect. And, you know, one of the things I want to make sure that I'm, I'm clear on also, you don't see um, any type of drawings at this point in time. We were strategic in that. From our experience with Weathersfield High School, we put out a design, and that's what everybody thought that's what it's going to be. And it was complete with a lot of photovoltaic. It was with geothermal. And, you know, as Mr. Drake can attest to, there was a lot that had to be value engineered out to cover the added cost uh, that we ran into with regard to PCB and with asbestos. So we want to make sure that we have the design that, that, you know, people have input on. So we'll be doing that process should referendum pass in November. Um, it's about probably 18 months total till shovels in the ground. And, and then from that point, how long until you complete the first two? We're probably looking at about another 18 months. Okay. And I know we have, um, in your packet, you should have a, um, a, a timeline okay. for that, milestone timeline. And again, that's always subject to change. But okay, thank you. Great. Uh, over the, all the practice I was involved with the schools, pretty much all of them, if I look back, and if I was going to do it again, some of those I would do multiple stories high. Are you, looking for, are you looking at any of that? I mean, to me, I know they were against it years ago, but now it makes all the sense in the world. In fact, I was, if we were going to do the high school again, I would think we were better off going too high, but wh whatever. I just, uh, I'm just curious where you were, were based on that. Yeah, the two, the two new builds, the test fits included multiple floors. Multiple You're looking floors. at, yep, two floors. The renovate is new. Um, both of those would maintain the current structures as they are. That, mm -hmm. the new ones would be yes, multiple. yeah, multiple floor. Is there, yes, a, is there any type of sensitivity? Well, you know, if it's done, it says, okay, the target is 279 million optimal. 
Yeah, what we're going to have to do in the event that the referendum doesn't pass, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and we're going to have to scale it back. So we may be looking at, you know, doing one school, looking at that one school first. And then obviously we're going to have to, when you look at it, you're going to break that time out farther beyond the 10 years. Um, you know, again, I'm hopeful that the referendum passes. I am well aware it is a very heavy lift. There is no two ways about it. Um, but, you know, I'm hopeful that looking at this from a perspective of, We've done our due diligence with this. We've been thoughtful about this. We've drawn upon our past experience with the high school project. We're hopeful that we can come in, you know, within budget on time and, you know, present our families for the future with, you know, 21st century schools that are safe, that are up to date, and that ultimately cost the taxpayer a whole lot less in um, rent of, in uh, maintenance. Yes, sir. Um, you're not going to be doing all of these at once. Though. No. No. You know, one or two at a time. Right? Mm -hmm. So you will have enough town building official and others to uh, take care of uh, what needs to be inspected and all that. <coughs> stuff. Yep. So we think we will. I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Last thing. Yes, sir. My board of education days, we had a 400 student rule in a school. Are we going to crack that? I think a little bit over. Yes. We've cracked that already. As, as I'm talking to you this evening, I'm just north of 475 at Highcrest. Okay. We're, we're full there. Is that the same for us? So we're looking, I think, um, off the top of my head, Dave, the projection for Highcrest at its peak with the enrollment projection would be 644. So when we, this is all done, what are we going to have? 500 for students? 400, 400? We'll have um, approximately 500 at Webb. We'll have 644 over at... Um, High Crest, and I believe Hammer comes in about 424. Okay, so it'll be a pretty good school then. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, we're definitely going from five to four. And I also want to mention too, while Charles Wright ultimately goes offline, the expectation is that maintenance, it's not as if Charles Wright is gonna be left alone for the next 10 years. You heard me mention that we did the portables. Um, obviously, one of the things we deal with there, which I've heard about a lot this summer, are uh, air conditioning units. The uh, air handlers at uh, Charles Wright are tired and we're having a hard time getting parts for them. So it's going to be one of the ongoing battles we're going to face here for the rest of the summer, unfortunately. Mike? Yes, sir. The, uh, the estimated state reimbursement is $107 million. Is that just a percent of the total budget or is it fungible based on some other factors? Yeah, so what we do with regard to our, let's take a look at our, our two new builds first, which have gone to the state. We completed educational specifications for both of those buildings. And what we did is we set, we looked at the space standard. The state will reimburse a certain percentage of the cost of that building. And it's interesting. So here within our town, Hanmer, Hanmer is a tough spot. Hanmer is tight. It is gonna be a tight space given the fact that it's in close proximity to the Stillman building and it's within Stanish Park. So our reimbursement rate there is less than it's going to be at Highcrest. Highcrest, we have the ability to be able to build it out exactly as we need to. Um, there aren't gonna be any space limitations whatsoever. Emerson is another school that is very uh, comfortable in terms of the percentage of reimbursement we're gonna get. And then ironically at Webb, when you look at the renovation cost for Webb, Webb we found was extraordinarily inefficient. And what happened was when we did the renovation in 2005, we basically took junior high classrooms and we, we walled them off and we split them up. So I've got classrooms at um, Webb that are not even up to what state standards are. It, they're se barely 700 square feet. So the middle school classrooms are way much smaller and we tried to stretch them out the best yeah. we could. Yeah, yep, know, exactly right. The classrooms right. were there and you didn't yep. have and one of the things you'll see too, Dave, with regard to Webb, when the renovation happens, you will definitely see addition space. You look at that building and you say, wow, it's a huge building. There is a lot of space between the auditorium, um, there's uh, you know, some music room and um, workroom space in the back, HVAC space in the back that's very inefficient. So the reimbursement rate, Peter, for um, Webb and for uh, Hanmer are not as, as robust as they are for Highcrest and um, Emerson Williams. So this 107 million you referred to here in your presentation is today's estimate, but could go up or down. 
Yeah, typically with the state, the reimbursement rate coming from the state is pretty stagnant. It may go up or down a couple percent here or there, but it's it's largely pretty solid. Okay. Good. Uh, I'm Webb. My kids went there. I remember as a parent going in that place and how confusing it was. And everybody says the same thing over the years. Uh, will that be, some of that be straightened out, really? And you, you even got down to parking lots being cumbersome. And it, the whole place is kind yeah. of strange. It, yes, and I think, you know, when you get to the point where you're able to, to do the design, you can think for that type of signage. And I'm, I'm snickering as you're saying that because if you go by web now, you may see some signage outside. That's one of the things we've done for parents in terms of where to guide parents to go to park. We actually put signage up outside just to, to help. Good. At least that's a one. A step in the right direction. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you, you've, you've mentioned due diligence a, a number of times, and I have no doubt that it's been done. But, you know, it, the materials that we got start with the Collier's study of the schools in 2018 that talk about you know, how they're safe and well-maintained and that they need $32 million worth of um, work to, you know, fix the systems and the maintenance that hasn't been done, you know, and then suddenly we're on scenario 4D for, you know, a third of a billion dollars. Um, how, how do we get from 31 million to where you want us to be at, at 4D. I mean, what was what was the thought process? Because, you know, I've been in all the schools at one time or another, and my kids have gone to several of them. You know, I, I think Charles Wright and Highcrest have always had the rap as having been laid out according to the fashion of the time, which was a long time ago, you know, and that they're, you know, somewhat inefficient and not conducive to, you know, modern teaching and so forth. Um, but, you know, the, it, it's kind of a long way from there to, you know, we got to tear everything down and start over again. I mean, you know, a lot of people need to fix the roof and the window on their house, but they're not going to tear it down and build a completely new one next door. Mm -hmm. What well, what was the, the analysis that led you to conclude that, you know, basically the big option was was the appropriate one? Yeah, I think the the reality here was that $32 million, and again, you're talking, you're going for almost five years back, I would argue that it's probably with inflation a little higher than that now. That's $32 million in repairs. That's not addressing design. So let's take a look at Emerson Williams, where you walk into Emerson Williams, you get buzzed in. I can easily get into the cafeteria. I can easily get into the gym. I can easily get down the hallway. There's no means of being able to stop people from getting in. Hanmer Elementary School, um, the HVAC system. HVAC at Hanmer is room air conditioners, and we replace them all the time. A tremendous amount of glass at Hanmer, and what we've done is we've, you know, from a safety perspective, we filmed all of that glass, but it's still extraordinarily inefficient. So at the end of the day, your $32 million is going to fix items that are for a building from 1973 or 1967. And you mentioned, Rich, the idea of Highcrest, that open classroom space, it's extraordinarily inefficient. And repairing it doesn't change its footprint. And that's what this long range building plan looks to do. It looks to change the footprint, it looks to redesign and design from scratch to be able to meet 21st century learning. And all of our elementary schools, frankly, at some point in time had open classroom you know, motif. Even Hanmer, we had to reinforce walls there in the primary wing. Um, Charles Wright, and Charles Wright has been chopped up in a hundred different ways um, for classroom space. So. I, I think the question was asked before, but let me be more specific. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't pass, is the 32 the fallback? The 32 has the potential to be the fallback, <coughs> but again, it's gonna fall upon a town, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a big lift. And remember what you're getting. What you're getting is you're getting repairs to your existing buildings. Where, I mean, you mentioned where you're going to build the new Hanmer. Where is the expectation that you're going to build the new Highcrest? 
where will it be? Yeah. It, it will be over on the corner where the ball fields are? Um, at the corner or mm -hmm. where the ball fields are? At, at the corner where the ball fields are. It would encompass that corner where the fields are. There's the whole, a, yep. All right, so the soccer field Correct. and the ball field is kind of up above that. Mm -hmm. And you're confident that the drainage there isn't gonna be an issue because that's kind of a puddle most of the year. Yep, we did a uh, geotechnical borings at that site as well as Hanmer. So we have um, data from our um, geotechnological company that supports it in that space. Um, one of the things we will have to be careful of over there, obviously you have wetlands. So um, we were able to do the test fit within the scope of the wetland space there. Yeah. So it's, Paul, but so it's gonna be on the corner of High Crest and Highland. Yes. Yep. Not the Cowboy side, got it. Correct. Where would you anticipate having the entrance and the egress for that? That would be part of the design process okay. at this point. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, and and you know, I, I think we live, you live through it every day. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, the idea that people are walking with their kids two miles to school is is kind of quaint notion these days. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, every morning at every school, particularly if it's cloudy, is just a nightmare. Yes. Um, you know, is there some thought being given to improving the? You know, not just at the ones that you're you're creating new, but at the existing ones, doing something about, you know, parking and surf circulation and traffic. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's a problem for an hour in the morning and an hour at the end of the day. But it, you know, it it's, you know, it's a problem. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I know that's one of the things when we did the high school project, we did actually a traffic study in the area. Obviously, the high school is the most concentrated uh, number of cars we have in our yeah, schools. Yeah, I mean, but we, I think it was a conversation here that basically flipped things from right. You know where there were going to be a lot of conflicts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll definitely look at that in terms of making flow more efficient, both for our buses as well as for our car traffic. And you know, again, the other piece I want to reiterate and, and get across here is, although you know, I'm up here, I'm representing the school district, and I am building these schools for education, and that's what the state reimburses us for. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that these buildings are used 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We use them for youth sports. We use them for park and rec activities. We have religious groups in to use them, um, civic groups. These buildings are used. They are really cornerstones of our community. So um, to be able to provide the opportunity for the community to use these as well, although, again, it's completely separate of the educational piece, um, I'd certainly like to have these available for the community to use. I think you had said that the two new schools, which were Hanner and Highcrest, were going to be multi-story. Was that going to be two or two and a half? Or likely, likely two stories. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would that mean that the footprint would be smaller or would the footprint be comparable? Because I know at Highcrest you're putting probably 50% more people in there. Yeah, the footprint would be larger ultimately. Okay. Yep. All right. Anybody else? Yes, Tommy? Sure, yes, sir. Tommy. A quick question. Yes, sir. Um, with the schools that are going to be uh, replaced, uh, have they outlived their, their estimated useful life as placed on them uh, by the original architectural uh, and engineering uh, you know, specifications? Have they outlived their useful life? Yes. Yeah, the, that's the engineered architectural estimated useful life at the time when they were initially constructed. As, as far as I know, sir, yes, they have. Neither one of those buildings that are going to be built new, neither Hanmer nor Highcrest have seen a full renovation as new since they were built. It's my understanding that uh, you know, the typical institutional uh, structures have an estimated useful life, typically uh, back in the 1960s and 70s of, of 40 years. And so that would put each one of these schools uh, considerably beyond that estimated useful lifespan. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Is there anything we didn't ask that? <laughs> <laughs> no, you've asked, you've asked everything, and I appreciate the questions very much. It's an honor to be here tonight. Thank you. Well, we're prepping you for 
answering the council and the people in town, right? Meet with, the meeting with the parents Thursday night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, Tom. Um, I apologize. There was one other question I had. Uh, this may be open to either the town manager or superintendent to answer. In the package that we received, there is a proposed uh, reco uh, resolution for this uh, uh, commission to, to adopt. Um, was that language uh, uh, drafted or proposed by uh, the bond council for, for the town? Yes, it's all bond council. Okay. My understanding is that, that the 824 review of the commission is, is essentially for purposes of uh, assuring uh, conformity or at least lack of conflict with the town uh, zoning and uh, planning regulations and plans in effect. Uh, the resolution would seem to be have language that goes beyond you know, the, the, the charge of this commission. Again, the, the bond council who drew that up and it was based upon what the state law requires. Um, he, he went through each of the requirements and that's what he provided. I could you know, get more information for you all. Obviously, you're gonna get a lot more opportunity if this project does move forward to review things with respect to the planning and zoning aspects of, e of each one of these schools. But um, for the time being, this is what he said is required is, is in, in the course yeah, of the well, My concern was, no, I don't want the commission to overstep the sure. boundaries of its authority here. And I don't believe you are based upon my conversation with the bond council. He said this is what is required with for, for state law. Appreciate your answer. Yep. Yeah. Rich, could I uh, make a, I understand your question, Tom, and have, having looked at it, I, I do think, you know, the. The resolution cites pursuant to section 8-24, which makes clear that we have an advisory positive or negative recommendation which affects the vote threshold on the town council. And I think the body of it is just setting forth, you know, in particular, which are new, which are renovations, what's the square footage and so forth. So I, I looked at it myself, but I just think from a planning and zoning perspective, it's consistent with our role and I think we could you know if I if I were making the motion I guess I'd say move to move to make a favorable recommendation and consistent with that to adopt the resolution that was provided but I I, I think it's within is, our is that a motion well, that, that, <laughs> that sure sounded good though. Yeah. well I think the only question I have is <laughs> what I'm looking at is different than what you're looking at yeah, because this is the only resolution that I got oh, okay and I, there was you a know, separate and one and I don't know whether end. this is the one you got that has like is this the 400,000 words and yeah. numbers. I was just looking at one paragraph. Okay, I don't. Which I'll give you if you I want. I don't have that. Well, why don't you read it aloud? Sure. Um, but, I, but I guess to go to your question, yes, you are correct. I mean, the whole point of the 824 is not to say, you know, that not to talk about the money. It is that this is an appropriate right. use right. of town resources. And, and yeah. And this doesn't. In the scope of our, our jurisdictional basis. And there's no reference to finances in this, if you want. Like it's a, a meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission of Weathersfield. Present were the following commission members. Absent were the following. Who moved? Who seconded? And then it says resolved that the Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Weathersfield approves the following projects pursuant to Section 8 24 of the Connecticut General Statutes. The demolition of the existing Alfred. W. Hanmer, Hanmer Elementary School and the construction of a new approximately 71,884 square foot kindergarten to grade six Alfred W. Hanmer Elementary School at 50 Francis Street, the construction of a new approximately 85,195 square foot kindergarten to grade six Highcrest Elementary School at 95 Highcrest Road, renovations, repairs, improvements, and additions to the Emerson Williams Elementary School, renovations, repairs, improvements, and additions to the Samuel B. Webb Elementary School, and the demolition of the Charles Wright Elementary School and the Highcrest Elementary School. Collectively, the projects, the town council is authorized to determine the scope, details, and other particulars of the projects, the foregoing resolution was adopted by the following roll call vote and then I think it's asking 
to identify the names of the members who were in favor and who were opposed. That promotion, Joe? Sure, I guess I'll, it, okay, just to be clear, you know, I'm, I'm moving that we make a, a positive recommendation under 8-24 and that we adopt the resolution um, that the town manager indicated was uh, provided by town bond council. Okay. Is there any discussion? So do we need to do a roll call vote or just vote? I, I guess, I guess in order to be able to get the names down of both in favor and opposed, um, maybe we should just go around the table. What do you think? Yeah, all right. I guess who's who's uh, voting on this one? Oh, all right. When I took Paul off the last one, um, I'll move up and take Peter off this one. I mean, I guess we could just raise our hands and then note the names of the hands that are up to whatever's faster. Yeah, I mean, it, and I guess I would invite anybody to, to make any comments that they have. I mean, I guess for, from my perspective, I mean, I think by advancing it, we're ultimately putting it out to a referendum for the voters of the town to decide. And uh, I, I think at this stage of the process, it's appropriate from my perspective to, to let the, the voters uh, determine it basically. So by, by taking this action, I think we're, we're allowing that to occur. Yeah, I mean, I, I tend to be in the same place. I mean, I have doubts and concerns, but I'd rather have people have the chance to vote on this. Dave? I approve. I just hope the escalation is the right. Oh. Other Dave? Yeah, I got you calling in. I approve. 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 Okay. All right. Here you go. I guess the meets you have what mm -hmm. you need to yeah. fill it all out. Great. All right. Thank you for your presentation. Um, next item, minutes of July 19th. Make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. A second. Okay. Did anybody have any comments? I thought they were good. Made me feel like I was there. All right, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions? Abstain. Yeah, and Paul. I abstain, I'll abstain. Okay, Joe and Paul abstain, everybody else in favor. Um, staff reports. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to mention is uh, I had a um, contractor come in this afternoon uh, seeking a demolition permit of the old diner, the gift shop on the corner of the Burlington Pike and um, Knott Street. Mm -hmm. um, so that should be taking place over the next few weeks. Um, I have had an inquiry about reuse of the automotive um, building on the property, um, but we've also been in conversations with a developer who's interested in redeveloping the whole site. So um, I'll keep you posted on that. Okay, good. The only business that we need to take care of is an EDI screening liaison. Um, oh, right. We didn't vote on that last time because, Paul, we didn't know if you wanted to do that or Peter also volunteered. Thank you for thinking of me, Dave. <laughs> 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 All right. So um, motion is to have Pete Lambruni be the EDIC liaison. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Dave Drake can't vote on that. All right. Anything else anybody wants to talk about? And you indicated that we do have a full of agenda of little things next time. Yes, uh, we have a, a pretty full agenda. We have two um, sheds that are oversized. We have uh, a trailer and a driveway. 
We have uh, mixed use, the one that was supposed to be on the agenda this evening for 164, 166 Main. Uh, there is an application pending for a new package store at 898 904 Silestein. Um, what is that? That's um, oh, that yeah, the, the sprint and it's the former exit. It used to be State Farm or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then the Grand Cafe is also seeking a special permit for alcoholic beverages. Okay. And that is Wednesday, September 7th because of Labor Day holiday. So please let Denise know if you're not going to be able to make it then in case we need to rattle the cages to get it flown. Sometimes we've had some problems. All right. Any more? Yeah. I said to somebody recently that I thought the Berlin Turnpike was developing faster and better lately than the Silasteen. Is there any truth to my thinking? And what I see over there? There does seem to be a lot of movement in the right. Berlin Turnpike. That's what I was and, thinking. And the Starbucks is the latest addition there. That will be coming onto right. upcoming agendas as well. So really that whole corridor has yeah, the potential. That southern part of it mm -hmm. in that area. On so the east side. Yeah. yeah. That's what that's a whole one mile stretch into the main market. Yeah, that, that stone building is finally taking shape. Yes. Um, yep. Is something, I don't know whether you can say or whether you know, is something proposed for the building next to it, the kind of brown one that has the big glass fronts? Because I know that people that have been doing the work on the stone building have been kind of in their yard as a staging area. Um, I've had an inquiry about that, but nothing no conceptual plan submitted just okay. kind of you know what what would be um, entailed in redeveloping for a, a number of different uses okay thank you anything on the nursing home at jordan lane um we're waiting to s i've seen a conceptual plan um they are they do have an engineer on board um so it's just um doing their due diligence to get those plans prepared Yeah, uh, they sent around that article to us about it. Yeah, I was also, I was down to town hall today and I talked to a number of town staff, chief staff, and uh, they told the town manager about 1,000 Silasteens. And uh, I'm disappointed somehow that the town went the way they went about it in the last few years of having Having the developer maybe renovate the site, uh, well, not renovate the site, but we were going to with the federal state funds. And the state doesn't sit around waiting for you forever to use funds, so we, we lost them. And I really think we gotta go back at that again through our state reps or whoever. And, uh, but it is complicated. Uh, only when you dig into something do you realize how how involved it is in the owner and the owner's reluctance to perhaps uh, act on uh, what he needs to do to renovate that site uh, to make it good for a future person to develop it. And uh, it, it, does, it does complicate things a lot for the town and the town staff, I found out today, so, uh, including the manager. But I, I hope we can go back at that. And I say, I'm conveying this now openly here, but uh, I hope it gets back to the town council. Thank you. Thank you. I hate to make these Tony. pitches here. But quick, quick question for Denise. The uh, status reports for the work in progress projects that are ongoing, mm -hmm. a couple of statuses to produce a status report on that. Is that something the EDOC would have on your minutes? Um, that status I prepare, um, so I'm intending to make that available once a month okay. to both commissions. Okay. Meet, yeah. with, meet with us only four or five times a year. Yeah, one other thing that 
that we got sporadically that might be helpful would be an update on blight and reinforcement because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think we all get an earful from people about what's going on at certain places and it would be helpful to know, you know, to be able to tell them that, you know, the town is aware of it and it's something that's happening. You know, it's been a couple of years since we got one of those. Um, I have met with Charles and the manager recently. Um, Charles does have a spreadsheet prepared. Um, I can definitely ask that he forward that to me to provide to you for the next meeting. Okay. Does Charles also think at times that things ought to be going to the Zoning Board of Appeals, right? Rather than to a, a large building to go out and see what is going on. I, mean, I kind of think so too, so I think we consider that. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that is <coughs> something that we've talked about and, yeah. you know, can we? He doesn't make a big deal out of it, I don't think. No, but it. it he said it to me a couple of times. Yeah, I mean, it, it is right. it is something that used to go to them and then you know, when we rewrote the regulations 20 years ago, we took almost everything away from them because we thought they were abusive. Um, you know, it's like every drive-through in town is by variance. I mean, <laughs> you know, that, that's just not the way to regulate land use. If you're, if you're around long enough, you wait long enough, things do change. So <coughs> yeah. The opposite yeah, I, th I think, you know, we've kind of lapped ourselves a few times. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have anything they want to talk about? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion so made. Second. All right, motion by George, second by Paul. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your summer. <laughs>